Hi, welcome to Cook with Joy. I'm Joy Kelly and this is my favorite cooking show and I hope it's becoming your favorite cooking show too. It's always been my favorite cooking show. And if you watch long enough, it will become your favorite cooking show. This is our third season of Cook with Joy. Can you believe that? I can't already. And you know, I'm going to make a recipe today that I've wanted to make since season one. But this recipe literally takes me two days to make. I don't have that much tape. I know. And so I've had to, with the magic of TV, we're going to make it here in about 10 minutes. Can't believe it. What? OK, so the secret to all of this is prep. And so I like to make it in two days because I can get half of the prep done on one day. The next day, I can just put it together and put it in the oven. Sometimes people think that vegan cooking and gluten-free cooking or healthy cooking takes a long time because there is a lot of chopping, and that's true. But I want to tell you this, buying pre-chopped stuff is not as healthful for you as chopping it yourself. But if, in your, if you're in a hurry, it's better than not having the dish at all. Speaking of chopping, we're going to chop some stuff up. We're going to start with onions because every good dish starts with onions, right? Right. And this one uses a white onion and a yellow onion just because I like it. And the finished product, I cut these up a little bit earlier because I was ready for you. And it's going to look like this, right? That looks good. We're also going to chop up some garlic. And I did that ahead of time too. Just wait. OK, I also cut this garlic up ahead of time so I'd be ready for you. What we want to do is we want to get just a little bit of garlic going in here and onion. Let's spray it with a little bit of oil. Remember what I've told you about oil? When you look at this, it says that there's no calories from fat, that's no fat, and so people think they're not using any fat when they use an olive oil spray. But if you look more closely at the serving size, it says the serving size is a third of a second of a spray. Can you do a third of a second? Yep. Yep, you can? OK. You know what? I better turn on the oven, though, too. Let me turn the oven on so we're ready. Hold on. All right, so that's going. And I've got my water going because through the magic of television, I've got this all ready for you. So we're going to add a little bit of olive oil. Not the spray kind, because it doesn't really matter. And you could do this with broth as well, just FYI. You wouldn't have to use oil if you're watching your weight and you don't want to get any extra added fat. I'm putting a little bit of fat in here, because I know Derek's going to eat this afterwards, and he needs all the calories that he can get. Darn right. Don't you, young man? And by the way, I don't know if you have a gas stove or you have an electric stove. If you have a choice, I always get a gas stove, because you can control the flame. You can turn it off. It's done cooking, and it just works much better. We're going to add a little bit of onion, about one onion's worth, to this pan. This is very scientifically measured. And we're going to get that going until it gets translucent. You know what translucent is? Uh, you can see through it? Um, kind of, yeah. It's like kind of pale. So onions and garlic are great for you. And they're really a staple in almost everything I make. When you think about lasagna, most people don't think, oh, what a healthful dish. But we're going to use gluten-free noodles. We're going to use no meat. We're going to use some faux meat that's also gluten-free. We've got onions and garlic, which are full of antioxidants. We're going to use spinach. And we're going to use mushrooms. Mushrooms are full of chromium and lots of other good things. And so this is actually going to be good for you. Did you say no meat? No meat. But you're not going to even know it, Derek. You're going to love it. I'm going to chop the mushrooms while the onions are cooking. And I'm just going to chop them up pretty finely because this is going to serve as you know that ricotta mixture that's normally in the center. But we're going to make this with, wait for it, we're going to make it with tofu. Is that amazing? No meat. No meat. Well, in lasagna, normally there's a ricotta layer, a ricotta layer, and a meat layer. But we're going to use a layer that is faux meat and a layer that is this faux ricotta, which is going to be made from the mushrooms, the spinach, the onions, the garlic, and the tofu. It's going to be so good. This is the time consuming part. And that's why I usually do this the day before, because you want it to set up in the refrigerator anyway. And so if you make it the day before, it's the hardest part of making this dish. And then the next day, all you have to do is assemble it. It's so simple. All right, let's add some garlic to those onions. All right, and you can see it's getting a little bit brown. I want to make sure that I'm stirring it. And it's getting translucent. Now I know I can add the mushrooms when they start to get translucent. Yay. OK. And as those cook. I'm going to get a big serving bowl out, and I'm going to show you how to do the spinach. Hold on. OK, so what we're basically doing here is we're making a faux ricotta. Let me just move that tea kettle out of the way. And how we're going to do that is we're going to take some tofu. 
and tofu is awesome for you. I like to use sprouted tofu because then it's even more awesome. Okay, so we're going to add the tofu and the faux cream cheese to the bowl, and then we're going to add the mixture that we just made into it. Trick, no meat, no meat, no cheese, no meat. So I have to squeeze this to get all the water out of it. And if you've never squeezed tofu before, it's really fun. I think you'd like it. So I'm going to squeeze it into the container. I'm just going to add that to the bowl. I'm going to crumple it up very nicely so it kind of even looks like ricotta. Let me, let, let me show you how that looks. All right. And I'm going to give another stir to this. Yum. I'm going to add a little squirt of oil because it's getting a little brown. Okay. And then I'm going to add the faux cream cheese. And there are several different types of faux cream cheese out there, and you can also make your own. I think I've done them. Did I do a, a series on that? Absolutely. Did I? I think yeah, if I didn't, I will do one for you to show you how to make your own cream cheese. But there are several different brands. This is Daya. This is Trader Joe's, and this is Go Veggie. And you can use any one of them. Today we're going to use Daya just because it's what I've got here in front of me. We're just going to scoop that in with the tofu, and we're going to get that all mashed up. And then we're going to add the contents of our pan to that mixture. Are you ready? Do it. Okay. Translucent onions. Translucent onions. Okay, so that's really nice. Now we're going to add the spinach. And we start off with frozen spinach because if you started off with fresh spinach, it would be too watery. So here's what we do. We cut this bag open, we spread it out on a cookie sheet like this and let it thaw. I now, defrost it. Well, you had the very clever idea of putting it in the sunlight, which was a great idea. I usually just put it out before I'm going to cook, and it's, by the time I get to it, I'm ready for it. Okay, we're going to squeeze the water out of this so that we're getting really, really, really dry spinach. And then to top it off, to get it really dry, we're going to put it in that pan that we had the onions and the mushrooms in, and we're going to just get all those little bits that are left. So I'm doing this with each piece, and this is really, really an important step. So I wanted, I could have done this all ahead of time and not had to show you, but then you wouldn't know how to do it. And I would be sad because the recipe wouldn't work. And then you'd be mad at me and Cook with Joy wouldn't be your favorite cooking show anymore. So I am sacrificing myself and squeezing the spinach. This is like the third time I've had to do this so I can create this with the magic of television. You're a hero. I am. Okay, so we get all that spinach in there. And that, we're just going to get it a little bit drier. And then we're going to add it to the ricotta the fake ricotta. Okay, so now we've got all the water out of this and I'm going to add it to the ricotta pan. This is going to be delicious. But like I said, this is the most time consuming part of the entire dish. Okay, and if I didn't tell you before, spinach is so good for you. So this mixture, as opposed to eating dairy, which is some people call cow pus, Instead of eating cow pus, what you're actually doing is getting all of this nutrition from the tofu, from the, from the spinach, from the onions, from the garlic. Now this is a little bit soft. You could make the, the lasagna just right out of this, but it's best if you let this sit for 30 minutes or sit overnight like I did. And this is how it's going to turn out. So you see how it's really stood up? It's really awesome. Okay. That's that part. I'm going to put this into a dish and put it into the fridge, and we'll use it again later. All right, let's make the meat part of it. And like I said, we're not going to use any real meat. We're going to use Beyond Beef. This is called Carnivore Encore. People love meat, and that's why we set out to build a better meat. So they take all of the building blocks and put it into something that doesn't have an animal in it. And it's awesome. First thing I'm going to do is get a little red sauce going. And I like to use this arrabbiata because I like a little bit of a bite. Now you could make your own sauce or you could just use any marinara. But I like this because it's got that little bite to it. And then I'm, I'm just going to heat this up. And when that's hot, I'm going to add the beef crumbles, the full beef crumbles. And Derek, you will not be able to tell that this is not meat, I'm There's telling you. There's a picture of an animal on the back. It's an animal with greens on it. It's an animal made out of greens, see? We take out the, we take out the animal, because you want the greens that the guy ate, right? Because the greens are the building block of life. And so when animals eat them, that's how they actually grow and, and, and build. So why not just eat what they're eating? Why eat them? They didn't do anything to hurt you, right? 
All right, let me stir that up a little bit. Okay, so let's stir that up a little bit. And you don't have to thaw this stuff out. You can just take it right out of the, the freezer and add it. And I'll show you what this looks like too because I made this ahead of time just for you. And this is what it looks like. So it's just a little, this looks exactly like a meat sauce, right Derek? It's just like it meat. It looks exactly like meat. Okay. We're going to assemble it all into a lasagna, a lasagna that's actually good for you. So you could make this lasagna and feel really great about serving it to anybody. It's completely gluten-free, completely animal-free. It's awesome. Even an Italian person? Even an Italian person I think would love it, actually. Probably would love, love, love it. All right, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of spray on the bottom of the pan so it doesn't get all sticky. Just a little bit. Remember, there's no calories in this, right? <laughs> okay, and then I'm going to put a little bit more of the arrabbiata sauce on the bottom. And if you're using noodles that you have to cook, they would be cooking right now. Um, and I do sometimes use noodles that you have to cook. I'm experimenting today because I always love to experiment on this show. I'm experimenting with some homemade noodles that you don't have to cook. They are lasagna sheets, and they look like this, and you don't have to cook them ahead of time. So we're going to try those out. I've also used this product, and there's several gluten-free lasagna noodles that you can use. I, when I use a hard one like this, I don't like to use the ones that you don't have to cook. They never seem to get soft enough for me, so I'm excited to try these and see what I think, but when I use the, this kind, and there are several that you don't have to cook, I don't personally recommend them, but you can try them. I put down a layer of tomato sauce, arrabbiata in this case, and then I'm going to place the sheets on the bottom. And this one's a little bit wide, so I'm going to strategically tear that off and put it there. I wonder why they made these this size, because there's no pan that, that's that size. So I'm tearing that off and putting it down. I'm going to tear another little piece just to fill that in so it's all, so it's got stuff all over it. And then, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little more sauce over the top. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. There we go. And then I'm going to put the faux ricotta on top. No meat. No meat. Okay, and I'm going to put this on top. I need a little more tomato sauce, it looks like. A little more. Got to make sure it's really nice and gooey. And then I'm going to put this ricotta just like I would regular ricotta, and I'm going to spread it so I have a thin layer all the way across. That looks amazing. I know. It's really, it's so good. You're going to die. You are just going to love it. You're going to want to take this home with you. I'm going to take them. You're going to have to fight my husband for it. He will fight you. He loves this lasagna so much. And it's even better the next day. And that's true with any, I think, with any lasagna. Um, my chili is kind of that way, too. If you guys haven't made my chili, you don't know what you're missing. Did you have some of that last night, Derek? And the cornbread. And the cornbread? Did you like it? Loved it, of course. I made that for a housewarming, and it was a big hit. It was really good because, and you guys can watch that video on my Cook with Joy site, but it's great because you can freeze it afterwards, and then you have leftovers for, you know, whenever you have strangers come into town that haven't been fed and had delays in their flight. Am I so. a stranger? <laughs> All right. There we go. So I've got that done, and now we're going to put another layer of the lasagna on top, and I'm going to do this the opposite way that I did the other one so that when I cut it, it'll hang together better. And I'm just going to let that one overlap. We'll see which way works best. And I'm going to tear off some of these again, fill in the gaps. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Okay, and now we're going to add the tomato sauce. And I could use either the stuff that I already prepped, or I could use this. I think maybe I will use the stuff I already prepped. Let's give that a try. Oh, one thing I forgot to tell you guys. Oh, shoot. I did this in the stuff that I already made so I can add it to the others. But I have to put in fresh basil, fresh parsley, and salt and pepper. And I did that in what I've just put on this already. And I'll have to add it to the mixture that I already put into the refrigerator that we made earlier. So remember that. And I'll show you how that looks when it's growing in just a second. But let's get that all smoothed out. Yay. And now if you wanted to, you could add another, um, you could add a little bit of some faux parmesan. 
I, I like both of these kinds. Now this one is made out of walnuts, so if you have anybody with a nut allergy, you wouldn't want to use that. But I do not. And then I'm going to use a little bit of this one as well, which is made out of rice. And that'll just give it kind of a nice little texture. And then I'm going to add the rest of the ricotta. And it's best if you kind of sprinkle this around so that you don't have a big glob in one part of it. It'll get melty, but you want to actually assist it by spreading it ahead of time. And once again, what I have to say is that, you know, as delicious as this is, it's also actually good for you. I mean, I don't know how, you know, noodles are still processed, but, and so I can't say, oh, they're like awesome for you. There are some noodles out there that are made from things like Jerusalem artichoke or quinoa, which do have some health benefits, but you want to remember that you want to limit your intake of those. Um, if you are eating a gluten-free diet, it doesn't mean replace all the you know, all the starches that you were eating before with, you know, gluten-free options. So you want to mostly be eating plants. But what I like about this recipe is that it's a ton of plants. A ton, a ton of plants. That looks pretty good. Derek, can you see that? It looks great. Yeah, it looks really, really, really nice. And then over the top, I'm going to do one more layer of the lasagna noodles. I'm really curious to see how these turn out without cooking them. And once again, I'm doing them the opposite that I did the other one, and I'm going to overlap them just a little bit because we ascertained that it was a little bit long. Okay, and then we're going to tear off some pieces to put down the side and just fill it in very carefully. And then we're going to put the rest of the tomato sauce over the top, making it nice and juicy. How many people are coming over to eat this? <laughs> I have a feeling that between you, me, and Sandy, we'll finish this thing off. I, it's so funny because every time I make this and we put it in the fridge, people keep going back and just taking a little sliver, another little sliver. Yum, yum, yum. Okay. And then if you want to, you can put um, that faux parmesan over the top, which I want to. So we're going to do that. A little bit of both. You know, people with nut allergies um, often can get rid of their nut allergies if they increase the amount of fruits and vegetables that they're eating so that they can improve their immune system functioning by lowering the activity of the B cells, which is what is causing that nut allergy in most cases. Okay. Oh, my gosh. This looks fantastic. And I'm going to just put this into the oven. And we bake it for about 30 minutes, covered, and then 10 minutes uncovered. All right, so let's pop it in. Oh, I got to get the foil. Cover it with foil. We'll pop it into the oven at 400. And while that's baking, I want to go out and show you the basil that I took off my tower garden. Okay, the finished product. Are you ready? Do it. I gotta tell you a funny story. Often when I make this, I put it on a cookie sheet. And at my last house, ooh, yum, 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 yum. Nice and brown on top. Maybe a little bit too brown, but that's okay. It's still gonna be delicious. I like to make this whenever I have out-of-town company coming. And our, my son came to visit us with his girlfriend a couple years ago, and I was at a different house. And the, the um, let me set this down for a minute. I just gotta tell you this story, it's so funny. The rack in the stove was on kind of a hinge, and when I went to pull it out, the rack tipped, and the whole lasagna started sliding out of the pan. But my husband was so quick, he got a pan underneath it, and we kind of had an upside-down lasagna. It was really delicious, but it could have been a true disaster. I really hope that you like this recipe. It is one of my family's very favorites, and it is kind of time-consuming, as you could see, but in my opinion, it's well worth it, and it will keep for days, and if you've got lots of company coming, it's really a crowd pleaser. You pair this with a salad and you've got, you've got a fabulous, fabulous dinner. Stay tuned next week for another fabulous episode of season three of Cook with Joy. I think you're going to like it. 